I feel sorry for a lot of young ladies in church. Young lady said to me, she said, Preacher Warren, can you pray that God will send me a husband? The Bible said in those days, seven women would be on one man. Isaiah chapter 4, <laughs> verse 1. Y'all watched the Jerry Springer show before in the past. Women fighting over men who don't want neither one of them. You fighting over a man who don't, who don't want to work. I paid child support, being a sperm donor. Many of you like them bad boys who don't love you or they want to get sex. Same thing vice versa. A lot of these uh, men like these feisty women who like to fight and wicked and doing witchcraft. I don't know why. Jesus said men love darkness rather than light, including women. I don't know what it's about that. But the Bible said seven women would take hold of one man. In those days, that's in the book of Isaiah chapter 4. Read it. There's a shortage of men in the church. So I understand why women go through things. You want husbands. You want to be married. Ain't nothing wrong wanting to be married because the Bible declares in Hebrews chapter number 13 that marriage is honorable in all and the bed is undefiled. Can I teach this thing? But homongers, but homongers and the adulterers God would judge. So you want to be married. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone is not a eunuch for Christ. The Bible declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2, let every man have his own wife. It didn't say another man's wife. Let every woman have her own husband. It didn't say another woman's husband. Have your own husband. Have your own wife. Marriage was ordained by God. I'm not talking about two men and two women. Because two men cannot make a baby and two women cannot make a baby. If a woman wants a baby, she knows she cannot get a baby by her lesbian lover. What's she going to do? Find a man. Because that's the way God ordained it. It's nature. You know your lesbian lover or your man lover cannot make you pregnant. So this is not no hate speech. This is truth speech. Praise God. Jesus loves gays, but he doesn't like the ways. Like he, does, like he loves those of us who are straight, but he doesn't like the hate. You don't want us those who are straight to have hate. Praise God. So now, the Bible said, if you cannot contain, verse 9 of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it's better to marry than to burn. God has ordained marriages. He says it's not good for man to be alone. So God gave man a wife and not a knife. He gave Adam Eve. He didn't give man a man. He didn't take the rib out of Adam's side and make a man. He didn't give him husband. God did not give Adam a husband. Uh-oh, preach Holy Ghost. God gave Adam a wife and not a knife. He told him to be fruitful and multiply. He didn't give Adam a husband. He gave Adam a wife. He didn't give Eve a, a wife. He gave Eve a husband. That's nature. There ain't no hate speech. That's true speech. That's the word. It's nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, there's a shortage of men in church. So I, so I know a lot of women want husbands. So many of you go outside the church and you find a bad boy, <laughs> a gangster from the street, try to get him saved. And there's a lot of times, there are a lot of gangsters who do get saved. I remember there was a young lady one time, I was preaching up in the church in Queens. And, Don, and some of Donnie McCurtland's members came to hear me preach a while back in David Butler's church. And they, he asked me to do a revival. And there was a young lady one time who told me she was about, she was about to get married to a, a man of God. But she told me in private not to tell her business. I'm not going to say her name. This years ago. <coughs> she said she was in love with a man in prison, in jail. She was talking to this man in prison. And her fiance didn't even know it. Uh-oh. Doing the doo-doo. She loved the bad boys. And she was engaged to a good man just about to get married. But she was talking to this other man who was locked up in prison and about to get out. I don't know what it's about these bad boys. God can change a bad man. Because there's a lot of men who got saved in my ministry. I was born in Harlem. Started preaching the gospel when I was six years old. So I got young men who are now ministers who used to be drug dealers and used to be in the life of crime and now they are spending time with Jesus. 
how they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I said to her, you can't be talking to this man in prison and get ready to marry this man of God and he don't even know it. How to give him some word of wisdom. How to give her wisdom. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I said, you got to make a choice. I said, you can't be in love with this man and tell me you want to marry this man from jail and then hear you talking to another man of God in the church and now, now he thinking that you want to marry him. She was all mixed up and confused. So I want to help the women in the church. I know you've been waiting on God for a long time for a husband. But when you wait on God, God will send you your Boaz. You got to make sure first that you are a virtuous woman because the Bible talks about the virtuous woman according to Proverbs chapter number 31, stopping verse number 10. Go to verse 30. It said, favor is deceitful. I'm going to help you out. And beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. So if you want God to give you a husband, make sure you are wife material. If you want God to give you a wife, make sure you are husband material. Because every woman is not wife material. You may be mouth material, but not wife material. If you like to fight and argue and do a witchcraft, uh-oh, preach Holy Ghost, you are not wife material. If you're abusing women, you are not husband material. You got to make sure you are wife material. You got to make sure you are husband material. It talks about the virtuous woman. It talks about character. It takes more than just being beautiful on the outside, but you must have beauty on the inside. Esther had beauty inside and out. The name Esther means star. Queen Vashti, who was King his King Yeshua's first wife, had out of beauty, but she had no inner beauty. She had an attitude. She was wicked. She was evil. So God, King Jesus, chose Esther. She had the inner beauty as well as the outer beauty. That's why I love my wife. You'll never find a perfect woman, a perfect man, but make sure first, make sure first that they love God. Make sure first that they love Jesus. Now you can both love Jesus together. And make sure that you both love Jesus more than you love each other. Praise God. Many of you are going with Solomites in the church. Because see, a lot of these Solomites are handsome. They can preach. They got the beauty salon. And a woman said to me, she said, Preacher Warren, she said, faggots make good friends. I said, well, maybe to you. You don't even realize that that same Sodomite is jealous of you because he wants to be you. Uh-oh. When a woman has a masculine spirit, she wants to be a man. Oh, a lot of women preachers are like that. Not all, but a lot of women pastors are very masculine. Praise the Lord, everybody. Growing mustaches. She can't help it she grow a mustache, but she's masculine. Got a woman lover on the side even though she can preach. A lot of men are like that. Some of the most talented people in the gospel world are Sodomites. Uh-oh. They're in the gospel music world. They can preach. They're handsome. They can dress. They can sing. They're very talented. But what did the Bible say? Romans chapter 11, verse 29. The Bible said that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Oh, come on, somebody. You can have all that gift and not repent. God is not coming back. Preach, Holy Ghost. God is not coming back for gifted people. God is coming back for fruitful people. God is coming back for holy people and not for homo people. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. He loves you, but he doesn't love the sin. Hallelujah. If you got the gift of the Holy Ghost, then you, have the, then you don't have no homo ghost. They did not receive a homo ghost on the day of Pentecost. They received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. That ghost is holy. Homo is not holy. But he loves you, but not the sin. You understand? A lot of them in the gospel music world. So a lot of them are very impressive. Women, there are a lot of women. One woman came to me a long time ago from Pastor William Brown Church. Another great man of God from years ago. God took him home. Had some friends in Salvation Livers. Had mating. 
It's one of my good friends from Salvation Living. She on YouTube. One young lady came to me. She said, Preacher Wyatt, I married the wrong man from Hezekiah Walker's church. She said the man was gay. She said Apostle William Brown told her not to marry this man. But she was so in love with this man. Because he was handsome and he can sing. King's dress. She married this man. Married the wrong one. Found the man had AIDS. Found the man was with a, a gay lover. Uh oh, preach Holy Ghost. She said she should have listened to Apostle William Brown. She had the wrong one. Oh, preach Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord, woman of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just prayed for you the other day. Oh, look at God. You're looking holy and you are holy. Praise God for the woman of God. See, that's a woman of God right there. You see, do you see how a woman of God can be holy? And notice, notice now on YouTube, she's not masculine. She's still strong in the Lord, but she's still feminine. You understand? She's still a lady. God got somebody for you. Right. We're talking about the virtuous woman. Praise God. Uh -huh. That talks about in Proverbs 31, uh -huh. starting in verse 10. Uh -huh. And I was talking about how it's a shortage of men in the church. A lot of times I feel sorry for the women because women want husbands. It's only normal to want somebody because the love that God has for us is a different kind of love that you have um, in a marriage. The love that God has for us is called the agape love. Yeah. The love you have in a relationship, in a marriage, is called the Eros love. You understand? So, so it's a different kind of love. It's a different kind. Right. Okay. So Adam loved, God, Adam loved God, but God says it's not good for man to be alone. So said. God gave Adam a wife. Come on. He didn't give Adam a husband. <laughs> Come on now. He didn't give Adam a man. No. He gave Adam a woman. woman. So that lets you know that you can still love God but still be lonely. Not that you're not lonely in the spirit. You're not lonely in the spirit because you got Jesus. Come on, come on. But you're still lonely in the natural because you desire companionship. That's why the Bible said it's better to marry. There you go, than the bird. First Corinthians chapter number seven, verse nine. Now it's gonna take God to match me because it's hard to find the right one. These days you got transgenders, transsexuals, drag queens so you better pray before you get married one time there was a woman who married a pastor she didn't know the man was gay gave his wife aids and she died that's why you got to pray before you get married even if he's a pastor he may be a good preacher but some of the and this is real deep woman of god prophetess some of the greatest gospel singers are sodomites james cleveland i used to love james cleveland yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, he yeah. was a sodomite. What is a sodomite? Sodomite is a homosexual. In the Bible, they call sodomites. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? When God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, they had men going with men. They wanted to even go with the angels. So the angels made them blind. So gays are really in the Bible called sodomites. You never find the word homosexual or lesbian in the Bible. Man gave it that. In the Bible, they call sodomites. Sodomite. Right. Sodom and Gomorrah. See? Sodomites. James Cleveland was a sodomite. He was a sodomite. And we used to love James Cleveland. Oh, my God. I, I got saved off of his song. What's and it looked like say? that in the gospel world, a lot of these sodomites, I'm anointed. They can sing. Yes, they can. They can preach. Yes, they can. But that's what the Bible said, that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You talking right, man of God. Those are ones God gonna say, I never knew you. Uh oh. Well, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. Lord, I did records and made gospel songs in your name. Matthew chapter number seven, verse 22. What is he gonna say? Jesus gonna say, I never knew you. That's scary. Depart from me, e workers of iniquity, because you never gave up that shot of my lifestyle. Oh yes, I gave you a gift to sing. Oh yes, I, I use you in your preaching. And yes, souls got saved. I gave you years to repent, but you never repented out that gay lifestyle. My God. 
So they can have an anointing, uh-huh. come on, come on. but still living that lifestyle. Come on. And the Gospel of Stella Awards, I saw a lot of women who got the anointing to sing, still got their boobs showing. Still got breasts showing. Still dressing seductive. You don't got to dress seductive to get a man. You're already beautiful. When you got the light of God in you. You don't got to dress seductive. You can dress holy like she's dressing holy. Like my wife dressed holy. Like you dress holy. You, know, you said be holy for I am holy. Oh, praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you women in the church. There was a woman who married a homosexual because she couldn't find a real man in the church. So she went outside the church to find a man. Come to find out the man slept with another man. So I felt sorry for her. Women got it more harder, in my opinion, in the church because there's a shortage of men in church. And the men of God who are there already married, but a lot of them are married to the wrong one. <laughs> a lot of them are married to a witch, a Jezebel. So I know the homos begin to act up, so you're going back home to the four walls and you're trying to wait for your Boaz. That's right. Come on. Come on. We're going to touch on subjects that a lot of preachers don't touch on. But we need to touch on these things in love because after all that shouting is over with, Come on. you did it with the flesh. Come on. You got issues going on. Come on. You want to be married and you're trying to wear on the Lord Come and you're trying to hold on. I, I, and, and we're not saying that man is the answer. We're not saying having a wife is the answer or the husband is the answer. We know that Jesus is the answer and he is the keeper. But God understands that he made you to be a woman and a man. Homos are going to act up. It don't necessarily mean that you are lusting. It don't mean you are in the flesh. It's that you have nature. It's only nature. You're trying to find somebody you've been trying to wear on the Lord. I want to talk to the young lady who married a homosexual and now your marriage done messed up. Now you're hurt. Now you're very depressed. You cannot change a man who don't want to change. <laughs> you said, but, but I'm in love with him. But if you know the man is gay and you know that he loves other men, I know you in love with that man, but you cannot change that man. He doesn't want to change. Now some men may change. Now something wrong if you're going with a man in the church who's gay and you're attractive and you love the Lord, but he still don't find you attractive. He still, he don't have no feelings for you. That should be telling you something right there. The man don't want you. He wants a man because a real man is going to find you attractive, especially if you're a virtuous woman. You got beauty inside and out. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Many of you are trying to change a man who doesn't want to change because you're saying that homosexuals make good friends. Well, maybe he may, make good, he may make a good friend to you, but a lot of you homosexuals are jealous of you, hear me closely, because he wants to be you. <laughs> he wants to be a woman. That's why he's competing with you. Uh-oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So how can he make a good friend to you if he's jealous of you and he wants to be you? Uh-oh. Uh, he don't like you because you're a real woman. There you go. That's what he wants to be. There you can say it. He don't like you because you're a real woman. That's right. And he wants to be a real woman, that's but it. he can't. That's it. You said a mouthful. That's, why he, like that's why he don't like you. Same thing with lesbians in the church. There are a lot of women preachers I met. They can preach. And most of my friends in the gospel are women. So God uses women. Well, I thank God she's not masculine. You're feminine. You're a lady. You're a virtuous, holy woman. I'm waiting on God. You're waiting on God. And God, and God got the best and not no mess. Because you ain't no mess. You are the best. So God got the best. He ain't going to give you no mess. Well, hallelujah. And you're going to know who he is when God sent him to you. Because whoso finds a wife, finds a good thing. Come on. Come on. That's deep too. When the Bible said, thank you. God be the glory. Thank you. When the Bible said, whoso finds a wife, finds a good thing, it means he'll find good qualities in you. He see qualities in you. Oh, that's deep. It don't necessarily mean that you have to wait for the man to find you. Ain't nothing wrong with presenting yourself to him and say, praise the Lord, man of God, and do you need a drink of water? And you're there to serve. 
as a help me. The right kind of man will appreciate you and not take advantage of you. The right kind of man will love your kindness and not take advantage of your kindness. The wrong kind of man will act like you were made, our slave. Okay. He'll be abusive. But if he sees that you are serving and you are helping him, he may fall in love and say, wow, she got to help me qualities. She got the qualities of a virtuous woman. That's what it means by whoso finds a wife finds a good thing. It means he sees good qualities. Boaz found Ruth gleaning in the fields. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He saw the qualities uh -huh. of a virtuous woman. Oh, help me hold it. Someone say, preach Holy Ghost. So it don't necessarily mean that you have to wait for the man to always come to you. That's been taught us in church a lot. You may see a man of God. I may say, man of God, oh, do you need water? Or can I wipe your brow? Do you need help? You're not being aggressive. You're there to be a help. The man of God may say, wow, I've been looking for a wife like this. She has good quality. She's wise. The Bible talks about the wise woman. In the book of Proverbs, chapter number 31, she's a virtuous, wise woman. She got qualities. That's what the Bible meant by whoso finds a wife, finds a good thing. She, what it means, he sees good qualities in her. He would never have known that you had those qualities if you didn't present yourself as a help to him. Unless the Lord might have shown him a dream about you. But when you begin to present your, when the Lord leads you to help him. You say, wow, I didn't know she was like that. She's a virtuous woman. She's wise. She's a help. He may fall in love. First, you start out as friends. You read the Bible together. You pray together. Pray, that's what it means by whoso finds a wife, finds a good thing. It don't necessarily only mean that you got to wait for the man to find you. Okay. That's been taught us in church. You're not being aggressive if you're saying praise the Lord. I'm encouraging him. See, he may need to be encouraged. Your encouraging word can catch his attention. If he's a single man, you understand. And that may be the very one for you. Now you encourage each other. Now he become your covering. God covers him and God have anointed him to cover you. Right. Hallelujah. So there's a lot of lesbians who wants to be a man. And the reason why she compete with the man, because she's jealous of the man, because she wants to be that man. Same thing with the woman who has a sodomite friend. He wants to be you. Like the woman of God already said. She got to be careful with that. Well, help me, Holy Ghost. We touched on some subjects today. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God. Thank you to God be the glory. Thank you. I just said that before you came here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say something to the women of God. To the women of God. Praise the Lord, you precious women out here. I yes. just want to encourage you today to trust God. Yes. You know, what God has for you, it is for you. And wait on God. Ooh. And if you want to be kept, yes. God will keep you. God knows that you're in this flesh. That's right. God will take care of those needs. I can't go into that on this phone. Yes. But I promise you, God will take care of all those needs that you have That's right. while you're waiting on God. Whoa. God knows that we're human. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We can be godly women, but we're still human. That's Right. We're still in this flesh. Yes. So we have to trust God. We have to wait Say on the Lord. God. You just don't go out there and get a man because this flesh is crying. <laughs> because it. you might wind up with something that God don't have for you. That's it. But if you wait on yes. God, God will give you the strength. You have strength like an a eagle. That's right. Wait on the Lord and trust in the Lord. And God will never put more on you, woman of God, than you can bear. Yes. I'm here to tell you that God will keep you yes. if you want to be kept while you're waiting oh. on the Lord. You be encouraged today. Oh, that was a mouthful right there. God sent you just in time to flow with this message. Oh, this ain't nothing but the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God got the best for you hey, and not God. no mess. Come on. Because minute, see, marriage is a ministry. What you say? You see, Adam and Eve was married by God. God was the one who married Adam and Eve. There's a lot of marriage people who had weddings, but doesn't mean God married them. What's your say? 
Because Mavericks by God starts in the spirit before it gets in the natural world. Whoa! So you're married in the spirit because you both got the same spirit. You both got the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of folk who are married in the flesh. And yes, they're married by paper. It was a wedding in the flesh. It might have been just lust. It's just a physical thing. It doesn't mean God has married them. The Bible said, who the Lord joins together. Let no man put asunder whosoever the Lord joined together. That's right. Not if you join yourself together, the Lord have to join you together. That's it. It says the Lord to join you. God will never give you somebody who's going to abuse you. God never give God will never give you somebody who's going to be competing with you. Because see, when you're married, uh -huh. you're also partners and not opponents. There's a lot of married people who are opponents but not partners. See, if you're competing with each other and jealous of one another, you are not partners, you are opponents. Oh, help me, Holy that's Ghost. That's not a marriage. That's not a marriage. That's not, a, that's not of God. That's it. That's it. Your flesh. That's not of God. That's you're right. Opponents. You're competing. That's not a marriage. That's not designed by God. That's not of God. That's right. You put that together, not God. There he you go. Whatsoever God joins together, let no man put asunder. That's right. Not what you put together. That's right. Whoa, we teaching some stuff this week. We know we can go this way, but it's the Holy Ghost doing this. Oh, this is going to help put you around the world. Oh, Lord, have your way, Jesus. Oh, do whatever you want to do. Someone says, speak, Holy Ghost. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. This is some teaching. The church needs this kind of teaching. You talking right. This is the church. This is the church. That's it. Oh, he's in the mess. Oh, hallelujah. In my name. Woo! Ah, hallelujah.